Today, we're cold calling, again, <laughs> but we're gonna make it easier. If you've watched any of my past cold calling videos, you know that my hands start sweating, I start getting nervous because I don't like getting cussed out by random people. Why do you people call like And I feel weird about calling people and kind of interrupting their day and offering to buy their house if they're really not interested. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't cold call or that cold calling is a bad thing. I'm just saying that I have historically been uncomfortable with it and I haven't put in the work to become comfortable so that I can get better. But I have found a little bit of a workaround, which is what I'm gonna show you today. So instead of calling homeowners who might cuss me out, I'm gonna be cold calling a particular list from PropStream that I'm gonna get for free and then I'm gonna find deals that no one else is targeting right now. Right now well maybe not no one else but most people aren't targeting I haven't seen anybody else make videos about this so let's dive in the first thing that I'm gonna do is pull up prop stream to find this list that I want to cold call and this video isn't sponsored by prop stream although you will find a link in the description where you can get a free seven-day trial to do exactly what I'm doing right here and using that link you won't pay any more than you normally would once your free trial is over but if you use my link then it will help to support the channel so use it if you so choose so we want to go over to prop stream and we want to come to our market you can type in where you want to what market you're investing in right here when you get your market pulled up you're gonna see that there are probably a lot of properties within that market you know that prop stream can identify don't worry about that just yet but the first thing we want to do is we want to come down to the statistics tab and I didn't even realize this existed until very very recently we're gonna hit this up arrow on the statistics tab and what we want to do is we want to scroll down to where it says listing trend and sales or actually we want to scroll down to where it says sales trend and we want to look at the last 30 days and see what the average days on market was so the days on market for my market is 97 days on market and you can change that you can see the last 90 days you can see the last six months and you can see the last year so you can see that my trend has been downwards that homes are selling faster and so knowing that just keep that number in your head or write it down I've got 97 as my average days on market from here what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit clear all in the top right and then we're gonna grab our pencil and we're gonna outline the area within our market that we want to invest in now if you're not sure like you don't know where in your market you want to invest I will leave a link in the description to a free training that I did that breaks down how you can use PropStream to find the hottest zip codes and hottest areas in your market that would be good for you to look in so that you know where to do your outline. Okay, so then I search and you can see that within the area I outlined, there's over 100,000 uh, unique properties. And we're definitely not gonna call all of those people. We don't wanna call the most people, we wanna call the best people. So I'm gonna come over to filter and I'm gonna come over to the MLS status and I'm gonna set this status to failed. Okay, I wanna know what properties in my market were listed on market but failed off of it. And so you can see that there's 3,500 properties in my area that failed off market. That's actually still not enough for me. I don't wanna call 3,500 people. And so we're going to continue to whittle down this list by adding in different criteria. So one thing I wanna do is I wanna say, did these properties fail in the last six months? So now I have to think what's six months from February. Uh, September, October, November, December, January. Okay, September. So I'm going back to September. And now I can see that list whittled all the way down to 264 properties, which is great. And we can still get it even lower. The reason I had you look at days on market is because right over here, we wanna make sure that the properties we're looking at were on market for a relatively long time because that means that the person wanted to sell the property but just wasn't getting any offers that they were willing to accept or they weren't getting any offers at all. So mine was like 97 days on market. So I'm just gonna put 90. And now I'm down to 25 properties. And my goal here is to investigate these 25 properties and find the ones that have some type of distress. And once I do that, instead of calling the homeowner, I'm actually gonna call the real estate agent for two reasons. One, real estate agents are less likely to cuss you out because they are used to getting phone calls about properties all day long. That's their job. And the second reason I want to call them is not just because I can ask them about this particular property and see if their old client would still be willing to take an offer, but I also know that if they got this distressed property as a listing, they might also have other distressed properties or get other distressed properties in the future. And now that they know I'm an investor looking to buy those distressed properties, I can get 
get on their list for their pocket listings, meaning they might get some distressed properties that they never even put on the MLS, but they just go ahead and send them directly to the investors on their list. So that's why I wanna go for the real estate agents rather than going for the homeowners. Another thing that I'm just remembering here is you see like this one is an apartment. It's a, it's a condo. And I personally don't invest in condos. And so if you want to be more specific with the property type, there are other characteristics that you could add in there. For example, you can come to the property characteristics tab and you can select single family only. So that took me down from 25 to 11. If that's not enough for you, we could go back and we could say, you know what, let's do within the last year. Okay, so let's do any time within the last year and now I'm up to 15. Okay, so I've got 15 single family properties within the last year that failed off market after being on the market for 90 days or more. If we wanted to get more, maybe we take this down to 75 days. So maybe they didn't stay super, super long, but we know that they, say they stayed pretty long um, towards the end of what we are generally looking for. We could even take that down to 60. It all just depends how many agents you wanna reach out to. So now I've got 30 agents, and before I go in and try to start making calls, what I have to do is verify distress. I have to see if I can do a little bit of research to understand why this property did not sell, and would it be a good candidate for me to make a low distressed offer on rather than just like a multi-million dollar mansion that didn't sell because it was multi-million dollars, but is it something that I actually wanna make an offer on? So before I call those agents, I've got to do a little bit of digging. Here's a really good example. I've come over to this property and I, the second tab is the MLS details. And I can see it says that this is an immaculate five bedroom, four and a half bathroom property on a spacious lot. Um, expansive open concept with beautiful hardwoods throughout. The kitchen is equipped with an impressive island, custom cabinets, etc., etc., etc. Why did this property uh, fail to sell? I don't know, probably because my best guess is that it was too expensive, not because it was distressed. So we can actually see all of the listing history here on PropStream. We can see that it was originally listed in, what's that, August of 2022 for 1.2 million, and then it just continuously dropped, 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 dropped until they took it off market. So that's not actually one that I wanna call. I don't wanna call that agent because it's not a distressed property that I'm interested in. It's just a really expensive property that didn't sell, probably because the market was kind of crazy. So we go on to the next one. What's interesting about this one is that from the description, I can't tell what type of condition the property was in. And there's actually no pictures here on PropStream. And so I'm gonna take this address and I'm gonna actually go look on Redfin. I like Redfin, some people like Zillow. I like the way Redfin looks. And here we go, we can see there were actually pictures um, of this property, but we can also see that this property is now pending, that it failed off market last year on what date? It failed back in January after 200 days on market, but they've now accepted an offer. And so it's a little bit too late for me, but this does actually show that we're on the right track because this person, it failed off market a year ago and then they put it back on market to try again. If I had gotten to them just a little bit earlier, then I might have been the person to make this offer and get the property back under contract because obviously they were still motivated to sell, sell, to sell. So double-edged sword. This one is already pending, can't make an offer on it, but it's a sign that this strategy does work because if they were willing to sell before, they're likely willing to sell again did find this other property, so I added to my filter here that the property has an active lien, and you can do that where it says lien, bankruptcy, or divorce status, and I put has active lien. So I found this one right here, and I can see that it failed off the MLS, was for sale for 160 grand, and I don't have much info, but along the lien, I can see there's an $800 HOA payment. So this just means that this person isn't keeping up with their payments for whatever reason it is. I don't have a ton of info here, but I can look at the street view, and see it's this property right here, just kind of on a, a cool little street. And so I just wanna give the person, the agent a call and see what the deal is. This is Elizabeth. Hi there, my name is Lily. Um, I was calling about one of your listings. Is this an okay time? Uh, yes. Awesome, it's it's actually an old listing you had. Um, I'm an investor, so I saw it failed off market. I was just wondering, is that property distressed in any way? Yes, it was only um, it was only gutted 
a little bit in the kitchen and but it's dated yes so gotcha. i would call it investment gotcha do you think that your your old client would still be interested in taking an offer on that I don't think he's able to. He uh, found out he had some liens on it. Mm -hmm. And so those liens would have to be paid off. Um, so that is all I know. And I mean, I would I would think that he would be able to convey that the payoff was very high and he literally was not going to make any money. And if you, I, I guess you got my name from a uh, third party source so you can probably tell that we were under contract for um whatever we were under contract for i don't even remember but uh it was not enough oh to, the 160 uh, pay all the payoffs gotcha can you tell what we were under contract for yeah it says 160 i don't even have it after the title work was completed and he discovered the liens 160 would would have made him bring like I don't even remember eight nine thousand to closing and right. he didn't have it right and uh, I felt so bad for him and and the buyers were amazing they were going to you know put money into it and and um, and then use it for one of their kids they they were such a great risk it was cash it was what he wanted and all that stuff only it wasn't enough after this title work was completed and the liens were discovered um it was just it, and he really really tried to work with the people who had the liens you know can we have some sort of settlement and blah 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 because not only could he not afford the bringing money to closing we couldn't afford to just write out a check for the amount of the liens either right so um i would say absolutely seek him out and see if you can help but i am positive even even with commission i mean even if you took out the commission you right. know what i mean right um which the credit card holder wanted us to do and i told my guy i said honestly it's still not enough right did, we had a price to sell you know yeah did they ever consider like if they would allow someone to take over his mortgage payments that's something uh, we've done in the past well it's not an assumable loan ah there you if go that's what you mean yeah but i don't know that you couldn't why not i mean why don't i mean these things are easy to find out online but call his mortgage holder and ask but even then that would satisfy the mortgage but you wouldn't i i i can't speak legally because i'm a realtor but it begs the question would you get clear title if those liens have not been satisfied right well, I will I will anyway, give him a call and see if I can help in some way. Um, yeah. You know, if he if he wants to still get it off his hands. Um, yeah. But otherwise, I don't know if you have any other listings that might be good for an investor. Anything else that you have right now? I mean, not at the moment. Are you an individual? Yes. Or do you I'm, work with a company of nope, investors? I'm an individual and I'm not licensed. As an individual, you're looking for bargains. You're looking for stuff. Yeah, I can find that for you. Okay, awesome. Um, and yeah, like absolutely. I said, I'm not licensed, so you, I'm not taking yeah. the commission. And generally what I do is I work right with the, the listing agent. If they mm -hmm. already have the buyer side, then they can, or if they already have the seller side, then they can take my buyer side too. Um, yeah. Totally fine with me. I'm really looking for anything distressed um, that I can do a renovation on and increase the value or anything. Well, I so um, wish I had you last week because oh. I am now under contract with uh, someone. Well, I appreciate it. And I will definitely yeah, text they you take those my number listings, and my email. Those listings under contract, like that they're, it's legal and binding. Oh yeah, but, I understand. You know, I'm not gonna say that they're, they're, that every realtor is ethical either. You know, I've been doing this for 15 years. I nearly quit twice because I thought this is not the industry for me. I don't like cheaters, liars, or deceivers. And, but then I, I grew thick skin and I got over it. Yeah, you know? I'm, I'm sure you've seen a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah.
But in, right. in general, I mean, I, I feel like we have each other's backs and we, you know, we respect each other and all that through, it doesn't matter what agent agency, usually. I, I would say 95%, even 98% of realtors are ethical. I'm glad but, to hear that. Know. Yeah, I've, I've had good experiences in the last couple of years that I've yeah. been doing it. So Okay, well, yeah, text me your name and your email and I'll be in touch. I sure will. And thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. Alrighty, talk soon. Bye bye. Bye. I said that was a successful call. So we're going to put that that was a warm lead. We're actually going to con, you can write notes as you go, but I'm going to contact the seller directly. High liens, high mortgage balance. Tried to sell before. Property is gutted. Okay, so that's a good lead for us. And. We're gonna exit our dialer and I'm actually also going to shoot her a text. So the great thing right here, right where I can also call, I can also shoot an SMS. Thanks so much for your time today. My name is Lily and my email is just shoot me a text or email if you ever want me to look at a property and right away. Here's another one that we missed. So you can see that this is an outdated property. Uh, it doesn't look really bad, but in need of, uh, could use some upgrades, right? Some upgrades would increase the value of this property. And we can see that it's sold off market back in August of 2022 after failing on market the first time. So let's keep looking. I found another really good one, but it already sold. Somebody did exactly what we're trying to do. It says adorable style, ranch style, uh, has had practical, practical updates, but still needs a little TLC selling as is. And that was in August of 2022. And then just two months later, it had a cash sale off market to an investor. So we missed out on that one, but again, we're on the right track. Okay, this is really weird. So, I found this property that was on the MLS. It failed off after 86 days, was for sale for 375, which is kind of high for my market, but it says that it's a single family house, 2,800 square feet, four bedrooms, three bathrooms. Okay, and it doesn't give me really any information about the property. So I went to look on Redfin and for some reason, Redfin's Street View isn't working, but still no real information. So then I went back to PropStream and I clicked on the map and this little thing right here, I can drag and drop and it'll show me the Street View usually, but it took me inside a building and this very much so looks like a doctor's office bathroom. And this doesn't look like a single family house. It pretty much just looks like some type of doctor's office. I don't know what this is, but I am going to call the agent and see what's going on here. It's just kind of weird. I'm going to show you guys how I would transfer this information from PropStream over to the system that I'm going to use for my cold calling, which is Resimply. So I'm going to go back to the MLS details page and I can scroll down and find the agent's name and number right here. And then I'm going to open up Resimply. And again, this video isn't sponsored by Resimply. This is gen genuinely what I use for this. And I'll leave a link for a free trial if you wanna try it out and support the channel by using my link. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a lead to my system and I'm gonna put in the agent's name and number. So there's my agent. And I'm just gonna put in parentheses that this is an agent so that I know it's not a homeowner. And then I'm gonna put in her phone number as well. Uh, no need to worry about the email and the lead source is the MLS. The reason I really like Resimply, there's a lot of reasons. One, it's gonna record all these phone calls for me. It's gonna do automatic follow-up. So I could put this person into a real estate agent follow-up sequence. So if we have a good conversation, but nothing comes of it, I can just put her in a follow-up sequence that in a week will 
text her and say, hey, thanks for our conversation last week. Just reminding you that I'm looking for distressed properties. If you ever get anything, here's my email. And it'll do that automatically just once I put that push that button. And then I could do it for a month out and do the same thing. Hey, just checking in. Did you get any uh, distressed properties in the last month? If so, send them over to my email like this. And that type of follow-up, I can customize exactly what I wanted to say, when I want it to send. I can have it skip weekends and holidays if I need to. Like there's so many different things I can do. Um, I can set the ones that are gonna be for real estate agents. I can have a completely different follow-up for sellers. I could have multiple different follow-ups depending on uh, what type of lead those sellers are. It can get crazy, but it's also really beginner friendly. Okay, and then I'm gonna throw in the address. And then I'm gonna add the lead. Okay, so now that lead is in my system and I'm gonna come over to actions and I'm gonna call the lead and talk to the real estate agent and see what information that I can find. This is Marilyn. Hi there, I was trying to reach Lindy. Thank you, all right. Thank you. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hi, my name is Lily. I was calling about an old listing you had. It's 33th Street. I see that it failed off market and I was just going through looking. I'm an investor looking to make some offers, but I wasn't sure if that was a single family or a, a corporate commercial space. If you could give me a call back, I'd appreciate it. You can also shoot me a text and um, we can talk then. Thank you. Okay, so then I finished that call and basically I can send a text message to this person. So this would be actually a pretty good idea or I can just title, you know, left a voicemail. And then if I had a bunch of people logged, a um, bunch of leads that I just wanted to call through um, one by one, then I could just go to call next contact. Or like I was saying, that activate drip, I could have a drip sequence that I've already built out that says something like, um, agent networking sequence. And then I would just add that person to the drip sequence and then go about my business. Um, Okay, if you want a more deep dive on how to set up your entire ReSimply system, I will leave a link to a free five day challenge I did helping you see how I use PropStream and ReSimply together and get both of them set up during your free trials. So that's how I would do that. Let's see if we can find another one and get an agent who can talk to us. Oh, I actually think I know this guy. Ooh, okay, so there's a couple of reasons that I'm interested in this property. For one, um, looking at the name of the agent, I think I know this guy from a Facebook group. I'm pretty sure he is a local real estate agent who also is an investor and he lists his own properties. Um, it doesn't give me a ton of information about why it was, sell it was for sale, but it failed off market. He wasn't able to sell it. And when I look on Redfin, there's no pictures of the inside um, and not a ton of information, but I really like properties like this uh, that have, let me show you the, the above. I like properties that are corner lots that have this type of uh, garage entry on one side and front entry on the other because what I've done in the past is I've put a wall right here and created a garage apartment with a front house and then put that front house as a typical rental and then the back house as a, um, what's it called? As like an Airbnb or like a small furnished apartment for like, you know, a traveling nurse or something like that. So I really like this style of property. You can kind of see on this street view the same thing where this could be the front person's property. I actually have one literally just like this already that we already did this type of conversion on. And then you can see that the garage is right here and somewhere around right here, we could put a wall and make those two separate units. So I'm gonna add him as a lead into my system and I'm gonna give him a call. Now, there's an easier way to do this. If you're pulling like thousands of properties, you don't need to do this one by one. I'm just showing you guys for this purpose, but you could just pull the list from PropStream, export it with all the names and phone numbers and addresses in their different columns, and then you can just upload that to ReSimply as a bulk upload and all hundreds or thousands of your leads would go in. But I'm just doing this for the purpose of this video. Thank you for calling Cole. Hi there, I was trying to reach Aaron. Uh, he's not with the company any longer. Oh, okay. I uh, saw his name on an, an, a listing, but I will uh, see if I can find another number. Thank you. Uh -huh.
Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay, interesting. So I can leave a note and it doesn't work there anymore. A voicemail or, or uh, other. Let's Google his name and see if we can find him somewhere else. All right, here he's on Zillow. Is that the same? Waypoint. Is it the same number? No, this is a different number for him. If this is someone new. Um, so you can add another contact. So you can say this is um, a secondary number. And we're gonna do the same thing. It's Aaron. That guy is an investor and a real estate agent. And so basically he's keeping as many of the good deals as he can, or pretty much all the good deals as he can for himself. He's not like a wholesaler trying to pass off good deals. So what he was saying is that he generally sells to the end buyer where he would, for example, owner finance so that somebody who maybe couldn't get a mortgage from the bank gets to purchase from him and then has like a $2,000 monthly payment. Well, that might work for them because they're living there, two grand a month for a family, okay. But for me, if I was gonna try to owner finance that from him and I had to pay him two grand and then I was gonna try to go out and rent that property, then I'd have to pay, find somebody who's willing to pay 2,500 just to rent and you can see that doesn't really match up. Now, what he's doing with owner financing directly to the end buyer is something that I'm interested in and working on, um, but it's not like a real, it wouldn't like be a partnership between him and I. He's kind of a competitor, which is fine because there's plenty of houses out there, but yeah, not a deal. But another kind of way that we can look at properties to give a call if we don't want to call directly to homeowners um, is we can actually call landlords. And so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to MLS status and I'm going to look for active, but I'm going to look for for rent properties. So I'm going to look for properties that are actively for rent. I'm not going to have multifamily two to four. I'm going to look at single families within my zone that I want to invest in and I can see that these properties are for rent and if there's anything in there that I think is outdated I'm going to call these landlords and ask them if instead of renting the property would they be willing to sell and this is because one we know the property is vacant and they're going through some type of turnover because they're looking for somebody to rent it and they might be a tired landlord they might be tired of somebody renting their property and dealing with tenants and they might actually be interested in selling if somebody gave them the opportunity I can look for properties that are outdated and I can maybe rent Renovate and bring up to standard and do a burr on them or if I wanted to do something like Airbnb arbitrage I could call these homeowners or these landlords and see if they would let me rent the property for them from them and put the property onto Airbnb and then I could arbitrage where I pay them a certain amount of rent but I get much more than that from Airbnb and I pocket the difference. So that's another list that you can look into from PropStream. With these, you would need to, for whatever properties that you're interested in, you would need to skip trace the property and you can do that right here through PropStream and their skip tracing costs 10 cents each. That's what I use. And then you can do the same thing, skip trace your list, upload it into Resimply, and then go ahead and call through. Let me know if you guys like this style of video and what I should do next. In the meantime, check out this video right here.